Hi there, thanks for joining me. This is a dwarf paladin costume we made for Halloween 2007. These are some of the supplies that are helpful to have. Uh, some tin snips for the, um, the thin sheet metal, uh, epoxy, paint, primer, maxi cure, glue. Uh, it's great super glue. Very potent though. Be sure you're in a well ventilated area. Uh, we started out with the hammer, uh, the great hammer of war for this guy. It is primarily made of blue board. Uh, we had to make a notch for the handle in the inside two sheets, which you see Brian making here. Um, the next thing you need to do is get yourself some construction paper and make a green mustache. Wear the green mustache for three days. Once that's done, make a groove in the uh, styrofoam, like I said, for the handle. Um, we put uh, the groove partially on each side. This is for sizing to see about you know how tall we needed it with the handle. Um, you can see how it's pretty bulky. This is after it's been glued together. The handle is just a, uh, the one there is a, um, in a closet rod. Uh, here we've sanded it down smooth, uh, much smoother than it was, and added ends on it to make it, you know, more like a hammer shape, and started to add paper mache. Uh, as you can see here, they've added, um, you know, a good, good solid layer of paper mache. Um, I think we ended up adding two or three layers all together after it dried. And uh, my sister was very careful to make sure that Orlando Bloom was uh, present on the hammer because she has a thing for Orlando Bloom apparently. Anyway, so um, paper mache several times, smooth it out as best you can, and um, and your final product will look a little bit like this. It's full size. Um, now it's pretty much ready for painting. <laughs> Here we've painted it with primer, uh, one solid coat of gray primer and then I actually had some black so I ended up using the black primer instead uh, and that got rid of all the newspaper uh, coverings then we went with the stone paint that you can buy it's a little bit more expensive and it did take a couple two or three cans I think altogether but it made a really good look for the for the um, the hammer after it dried uh, and then they left it out and scorpion ransacked our house and took the camera or took the uh, hammer and then he proceeded to smash Brian's car with the hammer. Um, so that was a fun night. Uh, anyway, so uh, next on the hammer we put some metal bands. Um, they're just thin metal and some rope to give it kind of a more authentic look. Uh, there was no real rhyme or reason for it as far as actual patterns go. It was just wrapped around in a way that it would stay tacked in with like I think screws or nails. Uh, here we actually had some uh, leather so we wrapped leather around where the hammer would be held more primarily. It was very comfortable actually. It was like a buffalo leather. We added little rivets or spikes to the metal to give it a finishing touch there and that's pretty much the completed hammer. So um, in the next shot um, I'm really showing the bicycle helmet we used, not so much everything else um, but the red bicycle helmet. We sanded down the red off of it and gave it a black finish, nice matte finish. Um, then we had to zip up to Home Depot which you'll see in the next picture. There's Home Depot. And uh, get some sheet metal. Um, the sheet metal, I don't know what it's actually called, but it's used for venting and ducts and stuff like that. Um, and we started drawing our patterns on it and cutting it out with the tin snips, um, making braces. We got a couple of horns from a bead shop, a leather shop. Uh, they were pretty cheap, so we grabbed a couple of those and we snarled with them for a little while. And uh, I think Brian's actually somewhat horny right here. But uh, anyway, we painted it silver, and in the back you can see parts for the hammer. Um, they've been primed and will be painted silver. But we just started adding stuff to the bicycle helmet, screwing it right into it. Uh, there was no real, you know, uh, plan. It was just kind of make what we could. These are going to make up the back protective panel, uh, which turned out pretty nice. Right here, you can see that. Um, Brian did most of the work on this on the helmet. Um, there's another view of the back panel. The way we painted it, the shading actually became a natural part up there where it's black underneath. It looked pretty good. This is rabbit fur. It was pretty cheap uh, at the same leather shop. So we tucked it down in certain areas to kind of hide the cracks, wrapped it around the horns, and and uh, voila, there you go. There's a, a helmet. looks very dwarfy. So uh, it was kind of heavy, um, but uh, it worked out later on, as you'll see once once he gets the rest of the suit on. It's also good for rocking out in your living, uh, in your kitchen. Uh, so helmets like that can always be used for rocking out. 
Uh, the way we put the armor on was we actually bought pads at a secondhand store. I got them for like 50 cents a pair. Um, painted them black and uh, then we formed the sheet metal into sections that looked like armor and actually put them right onto the pads and screwed them right into the pads. So that way um, he actually wore pads with metal armor around them. These are um, for, I believe, the calves. Yeah, I ended up making it and then slicing it into two pieces and then putting it back together uh, so that it worked around for his legs. Not his calves, I'm sorry, his, uh, his quads, thighs, I guess. So here's several pictures of, you know, putting it together with uh, screws and then making holes to screw into the pads. This is the shape of the shoulders which also became the shape of the knees as well. It worked out for both. Um, so that was the template. I made four of them. Uh, like I said, two for the knees, two for the shoulders. And uh, they turned out really well. They, um, once, the, once we screwed them together, we removed the tape and then put them into place. Um, here is where I'm actually making uh, the chest. Uh, I took slip sheets. Cardboard is a great way to make stuff first and then you have a template once you're all done how you want it to look. So this was his chest plate. You can see it attaches on top there with Velcro and on the sides with Velcro. Uh, here's the thighs and the knees, uh, kind of just checking for placement. Um, this next scene is basically a walk around of the, uh, the whole suit. You can see the movement of the knees. They have a little bit of swivel there. And then uh, also I come up around to the shoulders and uh, show you how those can also swivel as well. If you were to lift his arms, uh, they will come up a little bit. This is the only video I have of this actual costume. Uh, in the next scene, you'll see uh, where we've clipped out the bicep area. It's very narrow at one point so that it doesn't pinch his, uh, pinch his arms. Um, but anyway, it wraps around and then it goes around, uh, around his arm. Here's a full view of most of what we have at the armor so far. And this is the armor we've added rings um, right on the breast for holding the cape. And the cape is visible here. You can see where I added gold trim to a large white piece of fabric. And uh, then we attached it to the costume there at the chest rings. Um, and here it is hanging in the back. I made sure to have a little extra fabric there on top. It makes a nice the way it drapes is looks nice. Um, this is him just chilling, but you can see the rings on the chest plate really well. And uh, next we worked on the tabard. Uh, this is basically the tabard that goes across the armor, uh, sewed it all up on the sides, and the opening to the the neck area made it all nice and even. And did a placement picture here. And then next I added a yellow fabric around the edge and I basically sewed around a nylon rope to give that texture. Looks really nice. And then um, once it was done it looked like this. So uh, the yellow and the blue is kind of the alliance colors for World of Warcraft which is why we went that direction. So a couple of pictures of it. Um, in the next picture I actually had dyed the fabric on the pads to be black so that everything would look nice underneath and it wouldn't be orange and various weird colors so the black really hit everything. Uh, here we can see where I've actually given him a wig and a beard which filled up the extra space in the helmet to offer this final product right here. So that's our dwarf paladin. Uh, then we went outside for a few pictures, little action shots, see how his mobility was uh, on stairs and swinging things around. Um, took a few shots, had a little fun with it. So the hammer is gigantic. It actually was kind of heavy to haul around. Um, so he did a lot of where he stood on it and set it down and put his foot up on it to pose for pictures. Uh, this was a really nice picture where he had taken his helmet off and it just looked really cool the way the lights all hit it. it looked more like a, uh, a warrior in his armor. So uh, here's a picture and the kid in the background is actually the funniest part of this picture. So and here's his brothers, uh, the, the Murloc and a gnome mage. They uh, were all World of Warcraft characters that year. And this is a group shot where it was Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Lara Croft, Men in Black, and World of Warcraft.
thanks for watching and uh, check out my other videos.